Okay, so it is 2024 and you are watching this video because you're either trying to validate a purchase you already made or because you're coming from another older device and you're wondering if these two phones are going to tickle your fancy in the way that you need and want your phones to, right? Both of these phones are undoubtedly expensive. Now, if you guys are new here, I am not the kind of reviewer that sort of like breaks down benchmarking and spec numbers and things like that. Me personally, I view phones through a lens of a complementary piece of tech that can accentuate your lifestyle. So I'm going to break down the ways that these two phones accentuate my personal lifestyle, pros and cons of both, and how they might fit into your personal lifestyle and your personal usage. If you are new here, my... Oh, that sucks. Uh, that is an expensive fall. Looks okay, thankfully. Um, anyway, I want to get to you guys' video. If you're new here, my name is Dave, and I do tech. So one of those practical things on a day-to-day -day basis that do make a difference are your phone's visibility in outdoor situations, right? I mean, there have been a number of times when I'm out on the beach and there's no clouds in the sky, it is perfectly sunny, and looking at your phone to respond to a text or an email or something is just almost impossible. We're getting 2,000 nits of peak brightness over here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and 2,600 over here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. That is exceptionally bright. The Pixel 8 Pro gets exceptionally bright. In my experience, Honestly, the 2000 s that you're getting here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max is honestly really good enough for those really bright outdoor day situations. And so realistically, there is no problem here. It's been super overcast, so I can't really show you like a B-roll shot right now um, of how easy it is to see the phone in bright daylight. But if you're worried about that, there's nothing to worry about. In my Fold 5 reviews, I discuss how in my work as a clinical therapist, the S Pen on the Note 5 is an amazing experience and that there have been times when I forgot my paperwork that I had to have my client sign so I can just bring up a digital version on my phone, bring out the S Pen and it works incredibly well. And that's something that you can absolutely do here on the Galaxy S24 Ultra as well and have your pen just slide out, become a notepad or be able to use your phone as a signing pad. That's not something you can do here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. There doesn't seem to be any indications or leaks that anything even remotely close to that is coming to an iPhone anytime soon. And that's okay. I mean, that's something that not every single person is going to need. And for me personally, even though I do use this, it's not something that I use all the time, but it's nice that when I do want to do that, it's there and it works excellently. And so a lot of my time is spent either at a desk like this or in the car on the way to sessions to see my clients. And so battery life is something that doesn't personally impact me the way that it might for other people. That being said, if you're looking for really great battery life on either of these, you're gonna get it. I will say on a day to day basis, it feels like I end my days with a bit more battery percentage on the S24 Ultra than on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the S23 Ultra. But honestly, for the average common person, all you have to know is that if you're someone who has battery anxiety, um, experience with phones you've had in the past you could pick up either of these or the s23 ultra then you're not gonna have a problem something that i will say is that the shutter lag is fixed in that 12 megapixel mode for the galaxy s24 ultra but you are still getting some of that when you're moving up to like the 50 megapixel and 200 megapixel options additionally guys my goal for this year is to have 50,000 subscribers so i can move towards becoming a full-time content creator for all of you and so if you're finding value out of this video you're enjoying the content hitting the subscribe button is the best way to help me out and also stay up to date with all of the content that's going to be coming here to the channel uh back to your video if you're a gamer like me this section is going to be pretty short and sweet in that with both of these, you can run basically every single game that you want to at maximum everything. Even graphically intensive games like Genshin Impact, you can max out on both of these. The biggest exception to that though is that on applicable games, you can hit 120 frames per second on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, where you can do that on the S23 Ultra, and you can't do that here on the S24 Ultra. That being said, for me personally, 60 FPS, maximum everything, is more than enough, and it's a great gaming experience, especially that big mass of display and the 120 frames per second on the iphone 15 pro max you can hit but your phone's gonna get like really really hot to the point where it's uncomfortable to hold uh but you can do it if you want to um yeah so basically maximum everything on everything now when the iphone 15 pro max first came out it was under a lot of fire just because of all the dings and scratches that people's devices were getting quite easily just putting it in their pocket putting it down on surfaces and i have those problems with this iphone 15 pro max as well there's a lot of dings and scratches along the frame where say over here on my galaxy s24 ultra i have not had those problems yet um no dings or scratches 
knock on wood. But if you don't want to take a risk with your titanium frame foam like the iPhone 15 Pro Max or the S24 Ultra, Magbag has you covered with cases that are not only sleek and slim, but because Magbag uses N52 industrial strength magnets inside of their cases, you can stick on not only accessories like this wallet here, but also you can stick it to say your wireless charger or your refrigerator if you need to set a timer or something. It's a very sleek case with clicky buttons and what's great is that they kept in mind the secret weapon of the S24 Ultra, the S Pen. And they've also kept in mind other places you might use your phone like in your car or on a desk where you can have a car mount charger or a multi-charger so you can charge your phone and other wireless charging devices. So having a slim sleek case that I can just fit into my pocket super easily and it's easily one hand usable because it has an added additional width is really nice on top of having the utility of being able to slap on different accessories and use it in tandem with different mounts and chargers is awesome. And they have cases for your Pixel and your iPhone devices as well so if you want to protect your phone and also have some utility i'll link the description down below for you guys so you can be protected so i'm gonna keep it real with you guys keep this part short and sweet in terms of like everyday practical usage right using these for say texting people making phone calls which sound great on both by the way the speaker sets on both of these are excellent browsing the internet watching videos we've gotten to a point this was the case with the iphone 14 pro max the galaxy s23 ultra where phones are just awesome at basically everything that you would need to do on a day-to-day -day basis this is no different no matter which one you pick up you're getting a excellent well-rounded smooth software experience basically in everything that you do and that's a huge praise for samsung because that's something that initially was not always the case it was always the iphone that was smooth at everything and uh, galaxy devices had some hitches and but over the last few years they've really done a really great job of smoothing out their software and so if you're blindfolded pick one of these up to use as your daily driver you're pretty much covered at everything and so although i'm more of an android guy i have to say in this particular instance i actually do prefer um uh, the way that the iPhone 15 Pro Max feels in the hand, I know a lot of people love the super flat display, that it's boxier, but I honestly prefer more of that rounded body than the boxy one. This is completely subjective. I'm not gonna tell you that this is absolutely better than this. Even though I happen to prefer this, I'm usually more of an Android guy, but in this instance, I do like it a bit more curved in the hand. For me, it feels more natural and organic when I'm holding the device. Now, although I do prefer how the iPhone 15 Pro Max feels in the hand better because it is a bit more rounded, uh, I can definitely say objectively there are more options here that are going to be more helpful for more people that perhaps don't have super large hands in terms of one hand usability, right? There's a lot of different toggles and settings in the software here that allow you to customize your phone experience. That way, using this massive behemoth of a phone one-handed is just easier. And so for more people, even though my preference is the iPhone 15 Pro Max in the hand, for most of you guys at home watching that want a massive phone with a massive screen, uh, this is gonna be an easier device to use because it is more accessible. So it's funny because I was waiting to record the part about the screen brightness on both of these phones for like a really bright day. It's been cloudy, rainy, and overcast here for like two weeks. Um, but it's sunny today, but I already did that section, so that's not what this is about. One of the big things that uh, came to light when the iPhone 15 Pro Max first came out was that it had problems with overheating. And that's something that I personally experienced as well, is that when you were doing even just normal mundane things like going on Twitter, texting, phone calls, web browsing, watching videos, the phone would get uncomfortably hot. After a couple of updates, this is still one of the warmer phones that I've personally used, but nowhere near as bad as when it first came out. And on a day-to-day -day basis, even though it gets really hot during gaming, um, I can say that it is manageable and it's not a, the problem that it used to be. On the other hand, the Galaxy S24 Ultra doing normal everyday things, there is absolutely no warmth that is coming out of the device at all. And even when playing games, watching videos, this will get a little bit warm, right? If you're really pushing those pixels, like on say Genshin Impact, the, you will get some warmth, but it never quite gets hot the way that the iPhone 15 Pro Max did. In my iPhone 15 Pro Max review video, my initial one, my more long-term one, I mentioned how the community aspect is really nice, right? I got this phone and every single person that I knew basically was super happy. I was team Blue Bubble and could play the iPhone games, FaceTime, and it was nice being able to send like animated, emojis to my fiance wishing her a nice day but for me personally 
I don't need that community aspect to feel like my purchase is validated. And that's just me, right? Like I'm okay having a Galaxy Fold 5 or OnePlus Open or a Galaxy S24 Ultra. And like, it's, it might be cool if I run into somebody who also has one, but for me, that's not really a big factor. AirDrop on the other hand is something that I thought was amazing to use, not only sending pictures and video from my phone to my MacBook so I could edit more easily for these videos for you guys. And it was really nice too, being able to AirDrop things to my mom and my sister and basically everyone else I know. And I know that there's nearby share on this, but I don't know a lot of people with an Android device outside of my dad. You know what I mean? And this is really gonna come down to lifestyle. So you're not getting those suite of things over here on the S24 Ultra, but what you are getting are what I can honestly say have been really, really immensely helpful AI features on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Being able to select or, or circle something on your screen and have it bring up all of the relevant information that you need to know or may want to know about that particular thing, right? Being able to edit your pictures with generative AI, which I know is super controversial, but it's cool and can be helpful and you get a little watermark letting others know that it was edited with AI. Being able to generate, say, wallpapers, for example, to spruce up your phone's look. I mean, there are just so many things that are not just here, but work so amazingly well that you just don't have access to here on the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And again, personal preference and what you want your phone to be used for. And not even to mention the live AI for translation when you're on a phone call. I'm Puerto Rican, my grandmother's in Puerto Rico. And so like, if I were to call her, she's speaking in Spanish. It's nice that my phone is able to sort of like break that down, not only in text form for me, but can also speak it to me in translation. So usually for the camera section, it seems like you guys prefer when I don't talk too much over it and just sort of like give you the side-by-side -side stills and video and let you decide what you think. So here you go. And a question in the comments that I always get on these videos is which one do I prefer for me? Which one do I think is the more overall well-rounded device? And for me personally, until iPhone, Apple make some significant changes, it's almost always going to be the Galaxy. Uh, there are just a lot more utility, a lot more things that can accentuate one's lifestyle, even if they don't necessarily need those things all the time. Having the flexibility and an option there is really nice. And so for me... It's the S24 Ultra. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by and hanging out. I wish you a fantastic remainder of your day, afternoon, or night, depending on the time it is you are watching this. And as always, peace, love, and adios. Bye, guys, and have a great day.